let's take a look at the need for and the response to the need of network protocol standards. Computers need formal rules to communicate. There's many, many rules that as humans we just take for granted, such as do I address someone else when I first meet them in a formal setting or an informal setting? Now, we often don't have to ask that question. What we'll do is look at our surroundings. Are we meeting at a restaurant? Are we meeting in a formal conference room? What kind of dress? Am I dressed in a suit? Is the person I'm meeting dressed in a suit? Or are we meeting on the beach dressed in shorts? The surroundings and the dress code tell us a lot about our communication mechanisms that we choose to use. Computers don't have that. They need formal rules to say, here is when you talk, here is when you listen. Very similar to what we want to be telling our kids. These are the times to talk, these are the times to listen. So we're actually teaching our kids protocol rules. Now, a protocol is a formal set of rules that govern communication. Again, it says, when do you talk, when do you listen, what do you say, when do you respond? How long should you wait if you do not get a response? Different things such as this. Proprietary protocols are protocols or rule sets that are written to allow like machines to communicate. Now, this is the way that network protocols originally started to develop. So you would have an IBM machine that could only talk to another IBM machine because they only understood IBM rules and IBM languages. What the industry decided very early on that they needed in order to allow an IBM machine to talk to a Texas Instrument machine or some other type of hardware was a standard protocol suite. All the manufacturers were going to have to get together and make agreements or agree on the basic rules that everyone would adhere to. That way, if everyone used the same rule set, then dissimilar machines could communicate. For example, the national language of the United States is English. Now that means that if you want to communicate with anyone else in the US, you're going to use the English language. Some other countries have many different languages and depending on the area of the country to which you travel, you may need to understand a different type of language. Standard language makes it easier to communicate. As early as the 1970s, many companies realized this fact and said, you know, we need to have some sort of standards built in so that as our industry moved forward, we're going to be able to communicate regardless of the hardware or software type on the remote end. 